For this project, I want to control the brightness of uh, this seven segment display using pulse width modulation and uh, this keypad to control uh, the actual brightness level. So uh, if I press 9, it's uh, the highest brightness, as you can see. If I press 0, it will be turned off. And if I press something in between, uh, we'll have a medium uh, intensity level, as you can see here, 5, uh, maybe 2, and so on. And if I press 9, as I said, it's the maximum intensity level. So let's uh, take a look at uh, what's happening to have this uh, magic work. But first I want to say that uh, the flicker you are seeing on camera is uh, something that's due to pulse width modulation and it's not something that you actually see uh, with your own eyes when uh, you're looking at uh, the display. In a previous video I've uh, shown you how to connect this uh, seven segment display to the Raspberry Pi Pico board. Uh, always remember to use a resistor otherwise uh, your display will uh, likely get burned and uh, basically I've connected each pin uh, in order to the GPIO pins and uh, if you want, you can take a look at uh, my previous video and uh, you'll see there exactly how uh, everything is uh, connected. But it's connected in order. So um, uh, pin uh, number uh, one is uh, ground. It's connected through this resistor. And the next pins are attached to different segments and they are connected in the order using uh, GPIO 01 uh, then we have a ground which is skipped, GPIO 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. So each segment is connected to a pin on this side of the board. So now let's take a look at uh, the keypad. So uh, you see it here, it's a numerical keypad. Uh, it has numbers from uh, 0 to 9. It also has uh, some letters uh, and two symbols. Uh, and it uh, has uh, four rows and four columns. Uh, it also has uh, eight uh, pins here. I've uh, placed some wires in order to be easier to work with. And I have a diagram here. So uh, what it says is that uh, we have four pins, uh, the first four pins uh, that are connected to the rows and the next four pins are connected to the columns. So what I did here, I placed uh, white wires for the rows and yellow wires uh, for the columns. Okay, so let's have a look with uh, my multimeter. Uh, I'm uh, actually going to measure the resistance of this. So let's say I'm uh, placing one on this white wire, so it's the first row, and I'm placing this other uh, connector here on the first yellow wire, so this should correspond to one. So if I press one, uh, we see here there is a resistance here, uh, 155 ohms. Okay, So it's not a direct wire connection, there is some resistivity there. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, I will uh, connect this to the last uh, yellow wire, so this should correspond to A. So if I press on A, I see uh, there is a a resistance of 290 ohms. Okay, so you should keep this in mind. It's uh, not uh, just a simple wire connection. There is a uh, resistance uh, involved. So now, uh, how uh, are we going to connect and read this? Well, I uh, plan to connect uh, in order. Uh, the pins on this side of the board. Uh, 
and I have here a schematic of the Raspberry Pi Pico uh, connectors. So the last one is GPIO 16, 17, we have a ground, 18, 19, 20, 21, another ground, 22 run and 26. So uh, we are going to skip the ground and the run pins and just connect in order uh, to these other pins. So uh, let me try to connect it and also remember uh, before playing with the board, uh, always uh, disconnect the board from the power supply. Okay, so never uh, connect uh, wires while the board is uh, powered on. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take this first yellow wire and connect it uh, to the first pin. The second one. Uh, the third one, I'm going to skip the ground connection. Uh, the fourth one, so these are all the yellow pins. Uh, and now the next ones, uh, white. And the next one. So we have four pins, so there is a ground here, I'm going to skip it. And there is a run here, again I'm going to skip it. And this is it, this is the connected uh, keypad. So now let's uh, have a look at uh, the code for uh, controlling this. Similar to my previous video, I'm uh, starting by uh, setting up the pins for the seven segments display. However, this time I'm uh, setting the GPIO function to uh, pulse width modulation. Uh, so for this, uh, you need to set the shape of the wave that. Uh, you want uh, to be generated on uh, each of the pins and I'm setting the same uh, parameters. Uh, also initially I'm uh, setting uh, GPIO level 0 so it will be basically turned off. Uh, after that uh, I have here the keypad uh, interface and I've created a header file for it where I have this uh, structure where I set the number of rows, number of columns, uh, the pins, the actual pins for the row. Uh, this will be uh, GPIO IDs, the pins for the columns and the characters associated with uh, each position on the keypad. And I have here a C file that implements uh, the two functions, keypad uh, init, which uh, will initialize it, and basically it receives a pointer to a keypad structure. Uh, it will set the various uh, elements of the structure, and then uh, it will uh, go on and initialize the GPIO pins. So. It will call GPIO init, uh, then uh, set uh, direction. I'm going to use the row pins uh, to send the signal and the column pins uh, to receive a signal from the keypad. And by uh, setting uh, one of the rows uh, to be on and reading, uh, all the columns, uh, it's possible to identify which uh, key was pressed. But here in the initialization function, I'm just setting the direction, so it will be output for the rows and input uh, for the columns. Also, uh, the columns being uh, used as inputs, uh, they will be uh, pulled down. So you can do this uh, using additional uh, resistors, but uh, in my case I'm just using the GPIO pull down function and this uh, removes the need for additional uh, resistors. 
Now uh, the second function here is uh, read key. I'm uh, going to try to reduce this so you can see it better. Okay, so uh, what's happening here? It uh, receives a keypad structure. It uh, goes through all the rows and as I said uh, earlier, it sets uh, one of the pins uh, to be on and then it goes through all the columns and uh, checks to see if uh, we have a signal on any of the pins associated with the column. So if uh, we get a signal on one of those pins, uh, it means uh, the key that is pressed is the one corresponding to the row in R and the column in C. So it will uh, return the character from uh, this Charles array uh, corresponding to the row and the column. And uh, after that, it uh, also sets uh, to low the row that was initially turned on uh, here. Okay, and that's it. And uh, if there is uh, nothing pressed, uh, then it will simply return uh, zero. So let's take a look back in the main program. So we have a function to clear the display and another function to display a specific number uh, using a certain level. So let's take a look first at the display clear function. So it's here. Uh, basically, uh, it will simply set the GPIO level for uh, all the pins uh, associated with segments to uh, zero. So uh, the pulse width uh, modulation level will be set to uh, zero. So they will be turned off. And then uh, we have this uh, display number function that receives a number and the pulse width modulation level. And uh, this is very similar to the function that I previously discussed in my previous video, uh, but instead of simply turning on uh, certain segments, it's uh, using uh, pulse width uh, modulation set GPIO level. And uh, the corresponding segments will be set uh, to the indicated level, as you can see here. So uh, in this case for zero, I'm uh, turning on segments A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, for one, only B and C, and so on. So uh, the corresponding segments for each uh, number are turned off, uh, are turned on as uh, needed. So let's see how uh, everything comes together in this uh, main uh, function. So after initializing uh, the segments, uh, after initializing also the keypad, uh, we have a while true. So this is an infinite loop. Uh, first the display is cleared, then uh, the current number is displayed with the associated level. Initially this level is set to 100. Uh, now uh, the number is incremented, if it's larger than 9 it's uh, reset back to 0, so we have a counter from 0 to 9. And then uh, in my previous video I had here a slip for 1 second, but uh, this is replaced with this second loop, where uh, we are periodically reading the keypad and checking to see if uh, any key is pressed. So I'm calling this read key. Uh, and if we have uh, the key zero being pressed, uh, we are setting GP level to zero uh, and uh, various levels are being set for the different keys. So you can play with uh, these uh, levels and uh, this will depend on how you set your pulse width uh, modulation settings, so especially these two here. Uh, in my case, I noticed uh, these values uh, work. 
so this is pretty much everything also don't forget if you are creating additional files don't forget to add these uh, to the CMake list uh, file in order to get uh, compiled and uh, now you can use the uh, Pico extension uh, to compile the project you are using Visual Studio Code as I'm doing okay so I hope you enjoyed this and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time bye